So let me show you how to make some scientific measurements using an estimated digit. As we do this, let me point out a few things that make a good measurement. This measurement here for the length of the object using the ruler below is a pretty good measurement. It's a great estimate of the actual length of this pink object, 9.73 centimeters. In this measurement, there are some digits that we are fairly certain of. We know this object is at least 9 centimeters. It's past the 9 on the ruler. Also, we notice that these little lines right here, which represent tenths of the centimeter, the object appears to be past the 0.7 mark on there. So we know those two digits, 9.7, and call them the certain digits. In addition, there's one more digit that's added, and that would be this 3. That digit is called an estimated digit, and a good measurement should always contain one digit that was estimated. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to explain to you what I mean by estimated. And I want to point out, I don't mean that this is a digit that's just guessed or written out of thin air. Uh, but we estimate that digit, and I'll show you how in a minute. The third part of this measurement that makes it a good measurement is that it's labeled with units. Always make sure when you're measuring something that you include these units, because assigning a number to the length of an object doesn't mean a whole lot until there are units with it. In other words, saying this object was 9.73 could be very vague. That could be 9.73 feet or 9.73 inches, which are all different from 9.73 centimeters. So all three of these should be present in a good measurement. Now let's dig in a little bit further here for tips on measuring an object. First of all, I would always point out you want to know what are the units for the instrument you're using. And generally those units will be written right on that instrument. For example, this one has centimeters written on it. Secondly, make sure you look closely because some instruments are different. This particular ruler divides each of the centimeters into ten equal parts. So each of the labeled lines represents a centimeter, one centimeter, two centimeters, etc. And then if you notice all these little lines in between them, there are ten of those divisions between the two, meaning they are tenths of a centimeter, or sometimes you would call those millimeters. When we record this then, we're going to record those digits as tenth of a centimeter or 0.1 centimeters. At times you may pick up a, an instrument that only has five of those lines which is a little confusing. That means each line represents two-tenths of a centimeter. Another thing I want to point out, which is especially important with measuring length using a ruler, is that uh, a lot of times these measuring devices do not put the zero right on the end. In other words, the zero on this is moved over a little bit. And there's a reason for that. They recognize that over time with use, this ruler could get damaged. Students don't always take really good care of equipment. They may bang it into the table or something, and that would render this instrument useless, except for the fact that we've moved the zero over a little bit. So when you measure your object, make sure your object moves over a little bit too, so that it's lined up with the zero and not just the end of the measuring stick. The third thing that I want to point out is that we always try to estimate between the smallest divisions. So with a digital instrument, maybe a digital balance or something, you, you can't do that. But with an instrument that has lines on it, it's a good idea to get as close to that object and to use your mind's eye to divide those small divisions even smaller to give us an estimate. What do I mean? Um, well, I'd like to teach my students when they look at this object, we already know that it's at least five centimeters. We can read that off the instrument. That's what we called a certain digit. 5. And we also know that these divisions, which are each 0.1, this object goes a little bit past the sixth one. So I know that these two digits, the 5 and the 0.6. Some students write this down and they think that's good enough. Uh, this object's 5.6 centimeters. But if you look closely, if you zoom in on this, you notice that it doesn't line up exactly with the 5.6 line. In fact, this object is a little bit longer than 5.6. This is where we're going to use the idea of an estimated digit. 
What that means is I'm going to take this smallest division and using my mind's eye, I'm going to pretend like I could divide it into 10 small little lines here. And I'm going to try to estimate which of those 10 small lines it would line up with. Obviously, if it's halfway between the two, it would line up with the fifth line. But if it isn't quite halfway, and this one isn't, then I'm going to have to estimate which line would it line up with. Hence the estimated digit. So again, I'm not pulling this number out of a hat. I'm looking at how many of my little lines it would uh, line up with and guessing this probably is 5.63, maybe 5.64. Uh, and that's up to the person measuring how good their eyes are and what they're actually looking at and how well they lined it up. Um, sometimes these measurements will vary a little bit. Uh, but the point is we want to try to get as close to the actual length as possible. And we do that by estimating the last digit. Incidentally, this is also known as the uncertainty of this instrument. So um, generally, if we want to be even more specific, we would say this object is 5.63 plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeters. In other words, that last digit, it may be one unit higher or, or one unit lower, um, but it should be somewhere within that range. Let's try one more measurement. This one's a little bit different because we're talking about a graduated cylinder here. Recall that graduated cylinders are used to measure the volume of a fluid. And this instrument measures volumes in milliliters. So if you notice at the bottom of this object near the zero, you see an ML. And again, I would like to take my instrument and divide the smallest division into 10 equal parts when measuring this. I do recognize that this volume is going to be at least one. And I do recognize that it's going to be one point. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be one point seven something. Those are the digits that I would call the certain digits, the known digits. But then for that last digit, I'm going to take a careful look and when you're looking at a graduated cylinder, you may notice that the water sticks to the side of the glass cylinder, creating uh, kind of a crescent shape, right? So when I look at that, I'm going to look at the lowest part of that, and I'm going to estimate between those two lines which line, if I could divide them into 10 divisions, which line do I think that it most closely matches? And that's what I'll write down for the volume of this fluid. I'm going to give you a minute to think about which line you would write down or which number you would write down as the final estimated digit, and then I'll put my answer up. All right, so it's a little harder to see now that I've written on the picture, but I'm going to estimate that this fluid would probably come about 1.77 milliliters. If you put 1.78, uh, I could go with that too. It's somewhere pretty close to that. So 1.77 plus or minus 0 0.01. All right. That is how we take measurements with an estimated digit. Good luck as you make your measurements, and I hope that you do a great job in your science class.